Hey everyone, Kachi Investor back to another video for today, and this is the first time I ever cover this company. This is Celsius, an energy drink. Now you might say an energy drink. Who cares about that? Well, this company has been outperforming a lot of your favorite companies, my favorite companies as well, for quite a while. Now, and if we compare it to one of its major competitors out there, Monster Beverages, for example, if you invested in Monster stock in January 1990, you would have been a multimillionaire today. Yes, you heard it right. $1,000 in 1990 would have been over $2 million today if you invested in Monster. It's a tremendous growth story. There are some examples in plenty of books, I believe in the 100 Baggers one, and I believe even Peter Lynch in his book, One Up on Wall Street. Now, Celsius might catch up. Who knows? From what I've been reading, lots of people love their drinks, but just because people love their drinks doesn't mean that it's a good investment. Yet, fundamentally, the business is growing quite fast and pretty strong as well when it comes to the bottom line. Now, there is going to be a short-term catalyst, or maybe that's already baked in, and that's the fact that there is going to be a stock split. Now, each shareholder of record at the close of business on November 13, which is Monday, will receive two additional shares of Celsius common stock for each share held as of that date, meaning if you buy shares on November 13, which is the day this video will go live, you will get an additional two shares when at the opening of the trading on the Nasdaq capital market on November 15, 2023. So I repeat, if you're holding shares of Celsius at the close Monday, November 13, you will get two extra shares on November 15. Now, extra shares doesn't mean that it's free. No, it's just split into three. Like a pizza, you have one whole pizza, you cut it into three pieces. It's still the same pizza, just cut into three pieces just so you know. Now, of course, since Celsius is an energy drink, this is basically what some analytical firms are expecting. 2021, the market for energy drink globally, $46.32 billion. In 2028, it's expected to grow to $80 billion. So from 2022 to 2028, that's a CAGR of 8.12%. Now, how has the stock been performing? Well, it has been performing quite well. Year to date, it's up 65%, market cap of $13.32 billion. And if you look at PE, next 12 months, EV2 EBITDA price to sales, we are, for PE, well below the five-year mean. EV2 EBITDA also well below the five-year mean. Price to sales were a bit closer there. And then price to free cash flow, this is in the last 12 months. But if you want to look at just this year, year to date, even though the stock is up 65% this year, PE much lower than at the start of the year. EV to EBITDA, same story there. Price to sales, same story. The only thing here, again, is price to free cash flow. That's just much higher right now. Now, of course, you might say, uh, it's still too expensive for my liking. The stock has gone up too fast. Fundamentals are not there yet. Okay, fine, I'll show you their latest earnings report and then the graph and you can make up your own conclusion. Do share your thoughts down in the comments below. Of course, if you enjoy these type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not. We would really appreciate that. If you want to support me even further, do check out the link down in the description and the pinned comment to get the top 10 best stocks to buy now or go to fool.com forward slash couch investor. And yes, a video on the trade desk is coming up as well. So their latest earnings report. So they achieved a record third quarter revenue of $385 million. That's up 104% year over year. Where does that growth come from? Well, predominantly from North American revenue, which increased 107%. So North America grows faster than the overall business. And internationally, they're also growing quite fast. 56% increase there year over year. This is driven by successful innovation launches, increased velocity and brand awareness. Now, if we look at gross margin, that has also improved year over year. That's up 860 basis points year over year. Year to date, 48.1%. Year to date, 2022, 40.3%. So quite a nice improvement there as well. Net income increased 138% year over year. Diluted earnings per share is now 89 cents compared to a loss of $2.46. Adjusted EBITDA, also a huge increase of 318%, reaching $103.6 million. 
Now, to give you a bit more context, you can see here, this was mentioned also in the earnings call, Celsius is now the best-selling energy drink on Amazon with approximately a 21.4% share in the energy category ahead of Monster at 18.6% and Red Bull at 13% share. Our third quarter 2023 Amazon sales totaled approximately $22.2 million versus $15.6 million, same period last year, an increase of approximately 42%. Celsius is now the number one energy drink brand on Instacart and continues to outpace that category of growth as the largest and fastest growing brand on the platform. So pretty impressive growth. Now, of course, some people might say, oh, it's just a fad. It will fade away in a year or so and nobody will talk about Celsius anymore. Maybe, maybe, but I'm sure people said the same about Red Bull and about Monster. So yeah, so long as the business keeps on performing, that argument cannot be made. Now, I do want to say that the press release is a bit strange. It's a bit, I mean, all over the place. But anyways, Celsius is the number one dollar and unit growth brand in total United States, MULO plus C. And I had to look into what the heck this means. So apparently it stands for multi-outlet and convenience stores, which means the grocery, drug, mass, club, dollar, military, and convenience channels. The more you know. Now, so far, so good. So some of you are probably going to ask, why did the stock drop on this good earnings report? Well, it's probably because of this question right here from one analyst. So I just had one question on Pepsi's current inventory level. They've partnered up with Pepsi. So this makes their distribution also much better, much leaner, increases their own margin. So there is that. So the question on Pepsi's current inventory levels, they've been in the system for a little over a year now. It looks like you build inventory in 3Q. Just some color on what you expect to happen with those inventory levels in the fourth quarter as we approach a low seasonally quarter ahead of winter. Do you expect any changes in their number of days on hand? To which we got here an answer from Jared. As we look last year, it was difficult to really kind of peg whether inventories were pulled down or it was just a matter of seasonality. As we look now, we do have some innovation that we filled the pipeline with, so we are ready from that perspective. But at the end of the day, the Pepsi team would have to determine if they're going to do any kind of management around the inventory as they're going into Q1. I will say we are excited as we move into 2024 and there's no guarantees in terms of the inventory management from that perspective. So the market gets maybe a mixed message here. Maybe we could see some weakness going into next quarter because of this. I mean, if inventories are high, maybe Pepsi will say, look, let's wait and see. Let's get our inventory levels a bit down and then we move on from that. And maybe that created a little bit of weakness in the stock. And so if we look at the graph, yes, we reached a all-time highs back in September. Since then, we went back down to around 153, which was previously a level where we got a little bit rejected for quite a while before that big green candle in the previous earnings report. But I mean, on the weekly, this red candle doesn't really mean much. We got a nice little rebound here on the 50-day moving average. The 200-day moving average sits at around 143. So if you're looking for a better entry, I would definitely be on the lookout for this area, which means we go back to the area we were a bit before, so around $150 or so. RSI is close to 60, so a bit high, but not that dangerous. Now, for those that are still sticking around, this is basically the performance of Celsius and Monster Beverage in the last five years. So Celsius is up 4,300%. Monster is up 94% in the last five years. In the last 10 years, Monster is up 501%. Celsius is up 38,233%. But of course, that also had to do with the fact that Celsius wasn't as big of a brand as it is right now. Stock was very, very, I believe it was a penny stock back in 2015 or something like that. So yeah, when you go from under a dollar to over $150 or so, that's usually the result. But I highly suggest you go look into the monster story, the success story there, and see if you can see some similarities with Celsius. I'm already seeing some similarities there. It is a very, very big industry, an industry where Celsius is growing into and taking some market share as well. So if they can continue like that, I mean, why couldn't it be a success story just like Monster? 
remains to be seen. I'm still on the sidelines here, but of course do share your thoughts down in the comments below. If you enjoy these type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.